Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play Samurai Warriors Spirit of Sonnet. I'm the Serious JG. I'm having a good time with this LP. Hope you are too. Um, although by the time I'm done with this session, I'll be... It's going to be a month plus before I need to record anymore. I've got so many videos in the can now, but I'm having a good time, so let's continue on. It's uh, time to actually advance the plot. We'll start by talking to um, our ninja friends. Team Ninja over here. When are you guys going to get going on another Ninja Gaiden game? I mean, you know, I don't mind if you make us play, pay, buy the game a second time. Uh, if we want to play as, like, uh, what's her name? Big Boob Purple here, Ninja Chick, and uh, uh, Rachelou, and all those others. And, you know, but when are we going to get that another game? Have either of you noticed anything out of the ordinary? Nothing here in Osaka. It's as peaceful as you like, of course, depending on what happens in the Eastern Territories. The whole country could soon be in turmoil. The Hojo. Yep, they're still refusing to heed Lord Hideyoshi's call to pledge their allegiance to him in Osaka and pledge their allegiance to Mortal Kombat. Again, reference that might amuse Bobo if you were watching this and he's not. I suppose they're relying on support from the Date, but two fiefdoms are hardly enough to resist this opponent. Indeed, Oshu is replete with allies of Lord Hideyoshi. The Date and the Hojo alone will be powerless to stop him. And that's another thing, too. Like, the Date kind of late to the party as far as supporting the, the Toyotomi because they waited until it was apparent that they had no other choice, which, again, is part of the reason Toyo, uh, Hideyoshi kind of punished them. Oshu, another name for the Mutsu province. Present-day Aomori, Iwate, Miyagi, Fukushima, and northeastern Akita prefectures. It was also the name, general name given to the Mutu in Mutsu and Dewa provinces, present-day Yamagata prefecture and a portion of Akita prefecture. The latter was commonly referred to as the Wu region or Michinoku at times. So it's like Taka Michinoku? Due to assistance from the capital, it tended to give rise to numerous factions who disobeyed the central government over the years. Yeah, and although Masamune is probably the most famous warlord of the Date, I, I don't know that their zenith and power was reached under him. I, I'm vaguely under the impression that like the older generations of the Date were actually uh, higher in rank. Although Masamune was one of the most important and um, largely independent uh, daimyo during the peace that followed. Again, one of the things I find interesting... Masumini's whole character in the Samurai Warriors series is based on the fact that he was young and really kind of power hungry. Uh, and they portray him as being like ready to, to betray at any point in time. But but in a little bit in Samurai Warriors 2, uh, particularly Empires, there's a little bit about how he actually was more forward thinking than most of them as far as like what relations with the West could mean to Japan. Ieyasu was actually kind of the opposite. Um, but yeah, what I find interesting about Masamune is, is mostly stuff that's set after the Samurai Warriors games would end. Like, you know, setting up an actual Japanese uh, trip to try to make contact with Europe. Um, and um, he was not a Christian, but he tolerated Christians much more than most of Tokugawa's folks did because he... Uh, you know, was trying to bring in Western technology and, and ideas. He, he was he was somebody who was interested in the world as opposed to Japan. Uh, which is not the point of what's going on now. JG, get on with things. I might write a small piece about the state of the Eastern Territories in the Chronicle. Based on what these two ninjas just kind of randomly told me. Okay, so we've, we've heard about this a hundred times now. Although, actually, this is interesting. In order to meet the Toyotomi in battle, the Hojo turned to the Date clan of Oshu. Masamune, the young ruler at the time, was well known as the One-Eyed Dragon. Was often engaged in warfare, despite Hideyoshi's edict prohibiting it between feudal lords. And that was the other problem. Like, the Ashina clan, as you'll recall from my Nobunaga's Ambition Let's Play, because I'm assuming if you're... I'd probably a false assumption, but I'm assuming if... Vaguely assuming people watching this also watch that, because it's about the same topic. Very different game, obviously. But yeah, like, Masamune, like, got shit done. He went out and, like, fought, fought his enemies and kicked some ass. Uh, but he wasn't meant to be doing that. He kind of was able to get away with it because of the fact that he was geographically isolated from Toyotomi, but Hideyoshi had told people to knock that stuff off. It's another reason that once he finally submitted and 
bent the knee. He wasn't treated that well because he hadn't really been doing what he was told up to that point. Anyway, um, as a result, his victories, such as that over the Ashina clan at the Battle of uh, Suryagahara, enabled him to build a massive presence in Oshu. But again, all of his vi all of his gains from those battles against the Ashina were taken away from him by Hideyoshi. There is, you know, I don't know how much we'll get into it. There is no chance whatsoever that it, that Mats Masamune was deeply saddened by the, the passing of the Toyotomi into history. He was not a fan. So they kind of in Samurai Warriors 2 and Empires a bit set up uh, um, oh god, what's his name? Uh, the uh, Kanatsugu as, and Masamune as being rivals, which I guess makes sense uh, because they did kind of fight each other. There's a there's a big battle where Kanatsugu's most of his martial fame comes from, but I don't know that Masamune was personally there. But the Date armies were part of uh, defeating Kanatsugu, and they don't bother to make characters out of like you know Masamune's uncle who was actually there and blah blah blah. Okay, nothing new to be, nothing new to. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. I'd, I'd already done all the talking to the side characters. I forgot. So we can actually move on with the story. The Hojo and the Tokugawa. What does the future promise for our land? How are you finding life in Osaka, Yukimura? Such a large and varied townscape should be keeping you entertained, I hope. Well, I mean, it's bigger than the Sanada village, but they're both like tiny, tiny places compared to any real-life city. I mean, yes, there's much to here that cannot be seen in Ueda. It is all new and interesting to me. What about the 20 fucking videos you spent constantly wandering back and forth doing non-combat quests for Cha-Cha? I mean, what are you two talking about? This is hardly the time to be exchanging pleasantries. It seems the Hojo's refusal to pay their respects at Osaka has got you hot under the collar, Mitsunari. It's starting to look like war will be unavoidable. That's what Nani means, by the way. If you ever hear someone say Nani, what they're saying is it's starting to look like war will be unavoidable, a battle whose outcome is predetermined as a waste of money and soldiers. Battle against the Hojo. I should write about this in the Chronicle. Nothing is certain yet, although the tide of the times is certainly flowing in the wrong direction. Yes, tide and flow, tide and flow. We got it. That's your deal. The intervention of the Toyotomi brought to an end the conflict between the Sanada and the Hojo, in a way most advantageous of the Hojo. That is true. And yet, despite that, the Hojo refused to abandon their stubborn resistance. I wonder what Lord Hideyoshi thinks of it all. He thinks it's time for us to go murder the Hojo, is what he thinks. Whether or not we have to go to war, Lord Hideyoshi's dominion over the land is closed. That much is certain. Yes, Master Yasutsugi. The question is what will happen after that. How are we to maintain the Toyotomi rule? We won't. We're going to fail. The Tokugawa have always had close ties to the Hojo. If they would just fully ally themselves to the Hojo, we could get rid of them all together. Yeah, that's true. Actually, that's, that's true. Master Mitsunari, did you say something? No, I was just formulating a plan. Stop reading my mind. Get out of my mind, Liquid! What am I doing? Oh, I'm vaguely curious now. I didn't follow up with the ninjas after the plot dialogue to see if they have non-essential dialogue I should have listened to. Which, yeah, they almost certainly do. The Hojo were given the right to Mata, and we just had to accept that. But wasn't that in exchange for coming to Osaka and paying their respects? Yeah, it's it's interesting. This game is trying really hard. Uh, and it's an action game. But it's trying really hard to actually explain a lot of politicking. That is what I heard. That's what I heard. I don't get why the Hojo don't bow before the Toyotomi. Can none of them see the way this is headed? The Hojo always talk of their desire to protect the people of Kanto. No matter what, they will refuse to surrender to an external enemy. Yeah. Mm, I'm pretty sure their precious people don't want a war. Yeah. Thank you, Sazuke. I've been thinking that too. Once again, Yukimura is not... He's, he's like honor and loyalty and duty, man. I mean, he's... We know how he ends up, but he's been heading that way for a long-ass time. He can't understand... He can understand the Hojo not wanting to surrender. Sazuke is a lot more practical. It's like, you know, they're talking about protecting their people's bullshit. The people are going to be happier under Hideyoshi than they will during a fucking war. Okay, now it's time to talk to Hideyoshi. Hey, Yukimura. We're actually allowed to talk now. Oh, Yukimura, I've been looking for you. Why, standing here. Would you mind following me? 
Sure, I pledge my loyalty to you. I mean, certainly, my lord. Let's transition into a cinema scene. Yukimura, I would like to return you to return to your people temporarily. And I'm not marrying you to Cha-Cha, by the way. I mean, yeah, your brother shows up and gets married to a girl he doesn't even know. You two can fall in love all day long. You're not getting her, so fuck off. I mean, <laughs> my lord. What is going on? I have not granted permission. He is mine. He belongs to me. The East remains disturbingly volatile. I need Yukimura to go and assist Master Mazuki should the worst happen. The worst happening? Wouldn't that be the Sanada betraying you and teaming up with the Tokugawa? I guess that's not what he means by the worst. You mean conflict with the Hojo cannot be avoided? But I thought they had agreed to come to Osaka. That's right, the Sanada even had to give up Numata to make it happen. What the fuck? Lady Chacha, uh, men are talking. <laughs> Sorry, that is kind of the mood here. Well, it's true, isn't it? I mean, my, f my, uh, hey, what's it called? Foster father here basically effed you guys in order to make this happen, and it ain't happening. Hideyoshi sought to resolve the Namada issue by granting its rights to the Hojo and demanding that Ujimasa and Ujinao visit him and pledge their allegiance in return. They're making all sorts of excuses as to why they can't make it. Numata still smells like trouble. Pathetic. And you call yourself ruler of the land? Wow, she is quick to resort to violence. By the way, that tiger's about to eat my ribbon or a uh, hair beetle thing. Lady Chacha, you must restrain yourself. Suddenly I feel empowered to actually tell you what to do. No, Chacha's right. It's an embarrassment. It's embarrassing when she's right. Please, Lord Hideyoshi, I understand. I mean, please, Lord Hideyoshi, I understand. I'll return to Oeda and prepare for battle just in case. What do you mean, just in case? It's happening. We know that. Dot, dot, dot. So I don't know if she just personally doesn't want him to go, or she's probably shrewd enough also to see that it's kind of bullshit that they're going to go fight the Hojo for the Toyotomi when they got hosed by the Toyotomi in order to try to win over the Hojo. So, I think from her viewpoint, the Toyotomi have done nothing for the Sana to actually earn their loyalty. But, you know, Hideyoshi's got kind of a might-make-right thing here. You don't really need to earn people's loyalty if you've got a big army that can stomp them into oblivion if they don't show you their loyalty. Thank you. I'll let Mitsunari know. I've left the details up to Master Masayuki. Because he's, you know, um, probably actually better at this than I am. Hideyoshi... Uh, good military tactician, just generally really, really bright guy. <laughs> so, um, you know. But Masayuki was, was called a master strategist during his day. I will leave at once. Lady Cha Cha, I'm afraid our training must take a brief hiatus. Our training? Oh, is that what we're calling it now? Do as you wish. I will keep training without you. The next time we meet, I will pummel you into the ground. <laughs> is that a promise? I look forward to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of into that. You are right to throw- you are not to throw your life away for some worthless cause, is that understood? When the time comes for you to throw your life away, it should be on my behalf. Of course. And Hideo, she's like, oh, what is this about you pummeling him? What's going on with you guys? Mitsunari Ishida, retainer of the Toyotomi, a young officer who is a protege of Hideyoshi Toyotomi. It's tough on the throat, but actually this is one of my favorite voices to do. I'm gonna have to start, like, you know, I'm not sure now, in retrospect, why I didn't make one of the Final Fantasy VIII protagonists just talk like, uh, talk like Hideyoshi for no real reason. Maybe from now on, Irvine will stop being a cowboy and start being the monkey. Ooh! Aiki, it's good to be back. I'm glad to see you in good health. Tell me, what news of the Hojo? Ooh! Ooh, Nagarumi Castle. We don't know what that one is. It's a castle that was built to support Numata Castle. When Hideyoshi Toyotomi ruled that dominion and resided with the Hojo, he accepted Nazuyuki Sanada's argument that it was the birthplace of the Sanada and allowed Nagarumi to remain its in Sanada territory. The Hojo's Kuninori Inomata disapproved of the decision and immediately seized Nagarumi Castle. This actually led to a campaign against the Hojo for disobeying Hideyoshi's orders in war, or in actuality, the statement that Nagarumi was the birthplace of the Sanada was a complete lie. Wow. Okay, that's fun. That's an interesting notion. Um, I would assume that 
Hideyoshi probably knew it was a lie and went along with it anyway. So we've got a... Uh, Mazuyuki is basically claiming that um, the uh, audience at his inauguration was bigger than Obama's here. <laughs> That's kind of where we're at. It's like, yeah, everyone knows it's not true, but we still have to say it's true. The Hojo wanted all of Numata. I'm sure they are unhappy that Nagaruba Castle remains under our control. But we cannot let just let the Hojo have it. Well, no. It's the pretext for war. That's what's happening now. I must let Father know that I've returned to Ueda, even though they were talking like I'd returned to Ueda before. It's weird. Oh, patrol leader has a new quest. Have I seen anything on my rounds? Hmm. I've seen plenty, I can tell you. Things look not right now look mighty grim. Grim Reaper. Grimmeth Reaper. Thieves, killers, fires, looters, gluttons. Fires. Fire looters, gluttons. The world is full of sinners of all stripes. Antifa's out there, man. The age of war has brought ruin even to the souls of the people. It is at this time a true hero is needed, a true samurai. Need? No, it's beyond me, I'm afraid. You know what we need, right? Please, you have to help us. What the hell does he want from us? You are a true samurai of the Sanada, a true warrior of the K Three Kingdoms. Here's what I need you to do. There appears to be a killer on the Hokoku Road. Tales of those attacked and robbed and all their earthly possessions are flooding in every day. We cannot allow this evil doer to remain unpunished. We're all relying on you. So we have to defeat the amoral swordsman. Killers on Hokoku Road. The killer woke at dawn. He put his boots on. All right, let's see what we got for uh, turning over a really fancy fish to uh, this idol over here. Transfer students are idols. What could be gained from this, and how much do I care? Hikonomaki's gemstone? Okay, well, that's obviously better than Worm Word or Cucumber. Am I gonna save scum my way past this? I... I think it ended up on the left. Oh, I was not sick to a mighty bounty. Okay. Uh, this time, let's go with, um, what do we have where the high-end item is something we've got plenty of? Um, you know, let's give it a Lotus, because who the fuck cares if we don't, if we don't get the best possible outcome from this, it's just a, we got hundreds of the damn things. Please ask you to look after me in battle. Here's a lotus. A full on war, huh? Lord Yukimura, it looks as if a large battle is on the horizon. There's a bad wind on the rise. Yes, Lord Hideyoshi wishes to finally unite the land. Unite the land? Does that mean the wars will soon be over? That would be wonderful. Yeah, I guess it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, There's been peace for a while now. Uh, maybe other than the fact that the Date are stirring up trouble in Oshu. Those boys have already gone so far. Brothers, it's so hard to keep control of. I wish my boys would take a leaf out of the book of the brothers from the Senate clan. Uh, you mean end up enemies? I mean, spoilers. Spoilers for people who have no understanding whatsoever of the story of Sam, right? Of the Senators. Look at him, spending all his time dancing. What are you talking about? Oh, that guy. I was not expecting such a bountiful harvest. Yay! <laughs> Meanwhile, Mazuki's like, what the hell are you doing? I planted those. Okay, we got so many heavenly seeds, there's no point not... Well, other than I wonder sometimes if we if we get more interesting items that we haven't already gotten by using lesser seeds. And the battery level's low. I probably need to think about calling it a session soon. I'm still having fun, though. A rank... I don't know how you'd get an S rank without a frickin' uh, rapid fire controller, to tell you the truth. I'm sure people out there can do it without a rapid fire controller, but I do not appear to be one of them. Are you interested in Daikon? Uh, I don't, even, don't happen to remember what that is, so. We don't have much money, so I'm gonna train hard every day to become a samurai. If I had money, I wouldn't care. Then again, if I wanted to vote safe, you seem to have a lot of unrelated thoughts that you're spouting out there, son. 
Don't take this ass whooping personally, son. Come on, get rid of him and come be with me. Oh, no chance. And then she slaps Yukimura. Not that if I hadn't been kind of positioned between them, she would have connected. Yukimura-sama, Yukimura-sama, Yukimura-sama. Okay, um... Progress the freaking story, JG. Come on. We've already talked to all these... Oh, no, we didn't talk to... So did we... Yeah, I think we did. I think we talked. Eh, maybe we did. If they have no intention of attacking, then we should just leave the Hojo beep. Is old man Hideyoshi just another one of those guys who can't relax until he's crushed all who oppose him? Yes. Yes, he is. That is unfair. Each side has his own ambition, including Nobunaga's. This is a test to see who is more worthy. Ambition, huh? I tell you what, the soldiers who are fighting and dying don't care a jot about ambition. I mean, Sasuke is raising a bunch of really valid points. You can, we never really get to see whether Yukimura is hearing any of what he's saying. You know, picking up what he's putting down the moment what he's cooking. <laughs> uh, we've never been able to get along. It's time for us to end their aggravating presence. Okay. I don't know why I just didn't bother to do goofy character. But, oh, somebody else to meet and greet. Welcome. Are you waiting for someone? Oh, Cha Cha. Yeah, that's true. We've never been in a position to summon her. I can't believe we've been separated. I will miss you so much, except that I will instantly be able to come visit you whenever. And another one who actually sits in a modest... I'm obsessed with the idea of people splaying, but it's only freaking... Um, um, what's his name? The plague guy who's uh, ever failed to sit fairly modestly. What is it? I'm simply enjoying some dumplings. You're just in everyone else's way. If you stand there, come sit next to me in this instant. Someone get next to me this So I'm assuming she says the same thing to you no matter who you're playing as. Um, so that's... It's weird. It's like... I guess she's supposed to be likable, but kind of domineering. She's like, you're in the way. Come sit with me. So it's like she's... It's, it's nice. She's inviting you to sit with her, but she's also kind of being mean about it, I guess. I don't know. They are vegetables. I would have thought that much was obvious. What? I, okay. That might have made sense in some previous context. My family's lived in Vajkola Sandra for generations. I never imagined a young master. I mean, Lord Mazuki could build such a splendid castle. I could imagine Lord Yuki talk a smiling face now. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, whatever. There's Yukishige and Shigejigi. I heard Lord Nobunaki is taking a lot of the Tokugawa to be his wife. Wow. Okay, I, I was wondering when Yukimura would find out, but apparently he already knew. I hear the same. Lady Ina, I believe. She is the daughter of Master uh, Tarakatsu Honda. Ina, retainer of the Tokugawa and Tarakatsu Honda's daughter. She respected her father more than anybody and aspired to be like him in all things. Including, um, patent trolling. <laughs> As a result, she was always brave and dignified in times of both war and peace, and she approached all matters with a sense of honor and seriousness. Although she was strong-willed, she retained the politeness and kindness of a traditional Japanese woman. As such, another tangent. So, like all all cultures have their own like stereotypes about women, but like the most uniquely Japanese uh, stereotype of women is the domineering mother slash wife. The idea of a woman who, in her own household at least, is incredibly domineering. Um, you know, walk, walk five steps behind your husband in public, but as soon as you're home and the door's closed, you're the boss. That's kind of the the uh, stereotype of Japanese women. And sh when, so when they say politeness and kindness of traditional Japanese women, I'm like, that's not the stereotypical traditional Japanese woman. Now, nah, whatever. I'm sure there's more than one stereotype. I mean, stereotypes. The word stereotype is not innately mean that the stereotype is bad. It just means that it's like a prejudice. It's just something that you assume based solely on like where someone's from, what ethnic group they are, or whatever. <sighs> Weird tangent. Sorry about that. As such, it caused her to be somewhat caught off guard by unexpected happenings. She later married Nobuyuki Sanada and supported his various endeavors, including betraying his own family. I guess it, it's not quite that simple, but Tarakatsu Honda, retainer of the Tokugawa, Ina's father. He participated in 57 battles in his life, yet he was never wounded in any of them. He was... He, even Yukimura Sanada wouldn't have to worry around him, because Yukimura Sanada's infamous inability to tell when someone is wounded would never be relevant to Tarakatsu Honda. 
He received endless praise, including the statement Ieyasu is in possession of two great treasures. One is a magnificent helmet, and the other is Tadakatsu Honda. Wow, that's high praise, being being listed second uh, after a helmet as far as being the best things uh, Ieyasu has. Even Hideyoshi, even Hideyoshi Toyotomi referred to him as the greatest warrior in the history of Japan. He had a strict and prideful personality, and usually let his actions speak for him rather than his words. Although the last time we saw him in a cinematic, he was constantly spouting off, you know, at the new guy on the team. His loyalty to Ieyasu was unwavering, and he saved him from dangerous numerous danger numerous times. He was so loyal, he never once took Ieyasu to court for a small, frivolous claim. During his classes with the Sonida, he noticed the fighting ability of Nobuyuki. The guy that I was talking about last time when I talked about it was, like, being mean to some guy. Forming bonds of matrimony with the Tokugawa, I am surprised our lord accepted the match. Right now, we must join hands with the Tokugawa. Brother must have shown him that. Or brother just kind of likes the idea of getting married to the super hot, nice, uh, forthright lady. And talk to his father into it based on that. Reports from Odawara indicate that the enemy is carrying in provisions. What are provisions? Provisions are, well, the frickin' provisions. In preparation for a long... Yeah, and now I'm like, why do they define provisions? Uh, usually given to capable officers like Mitsunari over the quiet role by these officers play on It's not easily felt by the troops fighting the front line, so I like the animosity between the two parties. Okay, they're kind of talking about the fact that, like, logistics officers like Mitsunari was... don't get the, the glory of, like, big brute warrior dudes. So it seems a Hojo intended to hold out to the end. Which is actually kind of an important part of why Mitsu... Okay, I thought for a second my, my controller is acting really weird. I thought for a second we'd just run out of power because it's just stopped responding all of a sudden. I thought, we lost power! What's sad about all this, and I guess probably historically accurate, is that they were portrayed as being really close as kids. Uh, but as young adults, Yukimura and... Um, uh, man, I can never remember his name. He's a major character. His brother, Nobuyuki. Yeah, I never remembered on the first try. Yeah, they haven't actually got to spend any time together at all in uh, a long ass time. So let's talk to Mazuyuki. It was just not meant to be. Master Ihiduruka about Nagarumi Castle. What are you looking at? Do you speak of any specific concerns? No, nothing in particular. Okay. If we're meant to take away anything from that, it's probably that Yukimura was hoping to get some information out of, I believe, his uncle, and his uncle was just not going to bite. Oh, no, I don't mean to talk about Yukimura. I mean him. Okay, he's not actually a family relation. He's just uh, our buddy, I guess. Well, I really need to consider calling it a session. Maybe I'll... No, I really need to call it a session. So when we come back next uh, next session, I guess we're going to talk to Pops and see what's up. Um, in the meantime, I really hope I remember to actually uh, edit out <laughs> me getting takeout food. I'm the Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you'll join me. Uh, for me, it'll be a while. For you, it probably won't. For uh, more of Samurai Warriors, uh, Secret of the Sonata. <laughs> Tecmo Secret of the Sonata. Um, I didn't quite get there, but damn, we're close. That's part of why I want to keep this session going. Like, I want to actually get to another story battle in this session. But it, it is time to call it. And um, I think next time, well, we don't know. There might be a lot of dialogue to go. But we're getting real close, guys. I feel like we probably don't have any more mandatory... Like, they're not, they're not side quests in that they're mandatory, but those things that feel like side quests, like, go find Treasure Bearer on Rando Map. Like, I feel like we're done with that. For now. At least we won't have any more of those pop up before we have a real battle. Um, but we'll find out with more certainty next time. See you then.